So, hello. Today I will record my second tutorial presentation video. So, in the last week I spoke about or I wrote about um, the possibility to build textures um, procedurally directly in Houdini. I came up with the idea because uh, I faced some difficulties on my Linux system with Substance Designer, which was very slow. So this was basically the start to um, find a way to create similar things um, directly in Houdini, which also maybe provides um, some advantages. Because you don't need any plugin, you can build it directly uh, in Houdini and yeah, this will also save you some money, of course, and it will also um, make it much easier to render those, those procedural materials without the need of uh, plugins also on render farms. So, this image shows the example which I have built last week or in the last days. Um, which you, what you can see is that there are really a lot of fine details also on the cement and in, in the gaps and I also um, applied a um, paint type of texture directly onto the wall which is simulated directly in, in the, with the Houdini tools and then feed it directly into the texturing process and yeah these are three of the resulting textures and yeah so let us dive into um, Houdini so you can see how I made this first of all um, when I start with the process I encountered some um, difficulties with Houdini itself because Houdini I guess is not intentionally built in the first place to build procedural textures in COPS so the entire texturing process will uh, be done in COPS and not in the material network or I mean not the material will build there but the textures will build in COPS and there are also issues um, which we have to deal um, with um, in terms of how can I boost the COP network in, in terms of performance? Um, I found out some tricks for this. I also found out some bugs, I guess. The Houdini 16.5 version, which, will, which was released this week, changed also something a bit, like um, in, in regards to the file which I have released um, two weeks ago or uh, more than a week ago so I needed to update this and yeah I will um, describe what the basic uh, basic principle is and uh, to, to, to create patterns in Houdini and yeah first of all we need to change our viewport a bit because when you build large um, cop setups um, with um, with the um, image editor you will maybe face the problem that your um, file will crash on load up um, cause Houdini try to feed the textures directly into the viewport um, when you have a model here and yeah that's a big problem so I found out a way to uh, minimize this issue for this you need to create a new um, viewport style or a new uh, viewport setting I named it texture def for development and it's basically nothing more like a second or I split the the pane horizontally and move the compositing view and the render view to the to the right pane 
So every time when I load my Houdini, this pane is closed or minimized, which is the only way to um, prevent these crashings. So it's important when you um, build this setting, you need to close it and after you close it, you save your desktops. Otherwise, um, you will start to Houdini while this pane is open, which is not what we want. So the basic principle is quite easy. Um, I create um, a geometry and maybe that's a sphere. And we also want a material network and we build a cup network for this and in the material network I will create a principal shader I will apply it here and right now the color is gray like as usual and now I want to create a color in, in my cup network and create also a null call it out and we make the color red I will right click onto the out null and go to parameter and channels and scope channel dialog and we'll copy paste the channel path and then I will go to my material network to my prints into the settings of my principal shader oh wrong done wrong where is my ah here we will scroll down so um, in the principal shader, I activate the base color function and here we use the method operator path or operator full path by typing op double point and then the entire path to your out null in the cop network. And when you do this, you see you feed directly the color onto the shader. There is a little problem with it in the first place when you now change the color which need to be green you will see nothing happens in the viewport that's um, I guess this is not um, coincidence um, the problem is the Houdini viewport don't redraw every time um, uh, don't redraw every time so you need to help Houdini and this you will do this by moving the camera a bit or the viewport means when I now click and drag and drop the camera you will see the color will switch and this is important to know because every time when you work on displacements for example you will you want you will to see what you do in the viewport or how the uh, displacement uh, probably look like. So this is the trick. Move the camera and everything's fine. So, so but but there um, on default we have some problems uh, um, with um, complete procedural texturing in Houdini because Houdini don't provide all the functionality which, um, for example, um, um, Substance Designer has. So I figured out a way to um, bring in patterns myself directly into COPS. And there are two ways for this. One way is um, the geometry, geometry sub in COPS, where we can feed um, a geometry directly into the compositing network. And the other way is we can set up a render and for this, we also need um, a sub-network um, directly in the... That's the way I go. I feed it directly into the uh, COP network. So, yeah, these are 
the both ways. So um, let me try something. The first idea was the first idea was I create a, um, a geometry outside of um, the COP network. But later I found out it's much more or it's much better to do it, like I said, right here. So I will dive into the subnet one. Here we need to create um, um, a scene. A new scene means um, I create, um, uh, where is it? An object network. And right inside the object network, I can create a new geometry. So right now I can feed this geometry directly into my COP network. So when I open the pane you will see it. So that's my that's my box. And every time when I change my box, like let me try something when I Rotate it uh, in, in some direction. It will hopefully update, or even not. So there are some problems. Also, when you try to import colors from your uh, geometry or CD um, attributes, this is not possible with the geometry sub. I hope um, side effects will change this in the future because there is a lot of potential in this node. Um, but right now with um, the default settings, this is not possible. So I go the other way. The other way is um, to build a complete new scene right in the COP network. Means I dive down here, I delete it, I made a preset for this. And this is my preset. Um, I will delete this shader here and we'll drop this. A normal constant shader which feed the CD attribute directly into the shader system. And then I need to reconnect this. So and yeah, we also need a pattern. And I decided to build a pattern, which looks like this. And yeah, this is what we um, want in the uh, compositing. So it's basically no nothing more like a geometry box, um, copy to points, onto a grid and then I apply the color we can make it maybe red now and everything gets feeded into the out null so then when I choose the render you will see we have it right here but um, there is a problem for most users also was also a problem in the first place for me how can I see what the camera sees so the trick is to drag and drop the your pattern cam in your um, new um, sub scene onto your viewport, and then you see exactly what the camera is is, is rendering later. I also changed the mantra settings, um, made some basic changes. Our render engine is micro polygon right now. I uh, Turn down the pixel samples, the ray samples, diffuse quality, and so on. We don't need this because this is not a complex shader. That's just color and and basically masks in some sort. And uh, this, these are one of my settings, but not important. I cranked up the tile size for faster rendering because um, this is not complex, so I can. Um, raise the, the size and yeah the rest is basic the output picture is MD 
I guess this could be a problem in some cases. And I changed the tile rendering all to top down, not interactive. I guess it's faster when you deactivate all interactive rendering functions. And yeah, it's important to use the correct um, pattern camera. So you need to to use the correct pattern. I find out some problems with Houdini 16.5 when you do um, relative paths. Um, sometimes the cop network don't find the camera then. I don't. I guess that's a, that's a bug. And yeah, that's basically what I have done. And later you can go up, go up in your compositing network. And right now it's black. The first thing which is really important is to deactivate automatically re-render when necessary. Cause this will slow down everything. Every time you change something in your cop network, this rendering will um, be re redone. And this is what not what we want. So I deactivate this. Uh, then I found out a big trick to um, boost the entire compositing workflow. Uh, for this, you need to create simply a color which comes black with no alpha channel and uh, out. I call it sometimes render active or my cop atomic football <laughs> um, and the most important thing is to activate the render active right here every time when this switched to maybe another node in your cop network the entire cop network will be re-rendered to prevent this and to gain a boost of 50 to 70 percent you need it active it doesn't matter you don't um, to be honest, you don't need it at all. Um, so, this is what we set render active. And when we have a color, we only activate the view right here. And this is what we get. So, every time when I change the color here, it's instantly. When I would render it with some more nodes, it will be rendering the entire tree so yeah so and now what we want is to have this pattern mixed with the color for this um, I go into the render or I activate the render uh, sub which takes a second in the first moment every time in the first moment cause the um, renderer don't find anything so we, we need to relink everything to the new mention rod. And then we need to redo the rendering. And hopefully it will work. Yeah. So this is our pattern. It's red. It's not white like when we use the geometry sub. So we feed it the uh, color attribute right into the compositing. And now we are able to use the composite nodes. I prefer the composite nodes because they have a lot more of um, blending operations. You also have the ability um, to, yeah, to weight the four in the background much better. Um, apply motion blur is, is not needed right now. Um, but yeah, there are also other options like add functions, which is only the add function, and so on. We also have um, deform, the ability to deform a complete uh, entire image based on the on the attributes. Um, when we work in COPS, we can do this while using the C um, pane, which is your image and yeah here we can maybe deform something 
We also have different blurring options. We can do uh, changes in contrast, color, levels, HSV, a lot of stuff. Um, I guess there's almost everything you need for creating procedural textures. I um, compared um, Substance Designer and uh, Houdini Cops and to be honest, I don't found any difference um, in what you can do. It's it's fair to say that Houdini is a lot more complex. You need um, a good background in compositing, I guess. Um, for me personally, I have done those those um, texturing procedural texturing um, in in Natron or sometimes uh, in Uke which is also possible, um, but to have it in Houdini is, is much better. So, right now I can do, for example, this and that, and we get this. And the problem for that is our rendering is not the texture size of 2K. Um, we need to change the every time you create a color you need to check the image size and maybe you need to override it or the other way is you directly feed the first input into your rendering and into the color and the the sub or the node will take the the image size from the first input so that's the way to go and yeah, here we have um, some blending modes. And yeah, here's also important to um, check the add plane to see, so we see the color directly. And now we can blend something together. This is maybe average. This is how it goes, and then we can um, wait how much we want to plant that color, or that input, into the other channel. The most important thing is to check the alpha values, because when you use this composite node or any other node, often in, in, in COPS, the alpha value can go brighter or the alpha values can go above one, which is uh, compared to Natron or compared to um, Nuke, a large problem. In Nuke, um, the alpha values will kept at one at all uh, in, on default. Also in Natron, that's not in um, Houdini. And that can cause a lot of problems in the later compositing process. So it's important to check it or sometimes I uh, create a limit node and push this or drag this right in between. And here or at the moment um, I will limit all colors. That's not what I want. I only want the the range for the alpha channel. So I go to the mask tab and only activate the alpha channel. And now only the alpha channel will be affected from this. Which is exactly what I want. So this can cause no problems anymore while doing blends. And yeah, right now I will explain what I have done um, with the with a brick wall. The brick wall was really, really complex and is really complex. So let us dive in. That oh. Yeah, I made a mistake myself. I don't save the the network in the correct way, uh, the network pane or the viewport pane. And these 
or this um, error message is um, is definitely a bug from Houdini 16.5. It will not happen in 16.0. Uh, I cannot fix it at the moment. That's the problem with the with the flip solver. There are some changes. Uh, I guess uh, maybe that's a Linux problem. Don't know. Um, but we don't need to think or be afraid about it. So we just simply click OK. So this is what I've built. I created a box, a simple box. Um, I unwrapped the entire box. I used the, it's important to use the game dev um, tool set when you load up my file, um, which is available um, on GitHub directly from side effects. And we have done some things here. And I deleted the last one. I divided it a bit for a better viewport of the or a better viewport displacement preview. And I created a material sub for applying of the shader, which is right in here. And here I changed the inputs from the COP network. So I fetched some channels into it, also in the displacement. It's important to activate true displacement, maybe add bump to ray displacement, the normal map, just for testing and yeah, I guess it's what what we want. So and now I will dive directly into the network. Oh that's that's wrong. Maybe that's better. And yeah, and now you get shocked. So what did I have done? I uh, created uh, three um, backdrops. This is just the stuff that I've made for the for the painting. This is everything that happens to to get colors onto the wall, and this is everything what I've done with uh, to create to create the displacement. And when you start doing those. Um, procedural textures, it's better to start, first of all, with the displacement. So that was the first thing that I've built. The color uh, stuff um, was built later because um, the nice thing was that I um, was able to feed all the noises, the noise shapes and the, um, the uh, um, different patterns, which I have rendered here on, on the top. And directly into the coloring process, which was a really help. I also uh, made descriptions for everything so that everyone can understand what I have done. And now I will show you step by step what I have done. I hope it will not too confusing, cause um, it's yeah, it's very interconnected. So go back here. So the first thing that I've built was the render padding. Um, okay, that's the first time, so I have to render it, which is the representation of a brick wall. Um, when I dive deeper into the network, you will see uh, that I created similar similar stuff. I also um, came up with the idea to, to bring some differences into it. So I created um, a get UV function in Wops just to get the UV colors from the UV channel to the CD output. Um, then I randomized the prim, the prims. I used the color values and the UV values 
with the modular function to create some decays on every uh, on every pattern um, so that I can simulate that all bricks are not even to the wall so that they are maybe rotated a bit and I randomized the CD value again with a custom ramp and finally made a grayscale of it and yeah and so in the end that's what you get right here so let me push it this here and yeah and basically a constant shader which gets the CD color onto the render and nothing more. So the basic principle. Then I uh, cropped the values a bit or the image. I scaled also or rescaled the image to the 2K map. I blurred it a bit to get um, much or better edges, more rounded. I used a level function to, to change the contrast a bit. And yeah, then I started to build some noises. And to build noises was a really big problem in Houdini 16 because the noises were really, really slow. In Houdini 16.5, they are much faster. So um, I created different noise patterns, one with more detail and one with less, and also Alligator noise, which is the slowest one, and a lot of other patterns. And I also came up with the idea I that I try to build a noises direct, directly in the Bob context, so you can create a, a Vex Bob Cop 2 filter, um, and you can dive in. And yeah, oops, yeah, here comes the problem. Back to my stuff right here. Need to be render active all day long. So, back to normal. And yeah, here I just connected the X and Y values to drive the position of the curl noise with a simplex noise and feed everything back to the RGB values. Um, changed it here a bit. That's all for the gravel type structure of the cement. Yeah. And I also created uh, some other patterns. For example, um, a type of crack pattern, which is basically nothing more like an L system. Or different L systems. I also created stash nodes for everything. So um, the L systems or fluid simulations or erosion simulation of high fields um, are based on your frame number. So when you um, create a texture, it's, it's better to to have everything on frame one <clears throat> or equal on every frame. So it's important to use the stash nodes so that uh, the current values are stored right directly into the Houdini file. So, yeah, and created some color variations, like as usual, and feed it everything into another noise, or in that case, into, into another mask. The mask is that. I try to create a lot of different pattern types, but this is a this this is the best example that you can create a lot of different patterns, more patterns like you will um, probably have on default in any other um, tool, because you can use the entire range of tools from Houdini's um, geometry context. So this is 
this is what what I've done right here. It's just plain simple. I also try to use the high fields. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it has advantages, but high fields are also very slow and very um, um, data intensive. Means your Houdini file will crow a lot when you stash those stuff. And yeah, basic stuff right here. Get UVs, differences, and grayscale. Yeah, and then I feed everything right here, right directly into this with the multiply node. And yeah, that's basically what happens in the entire network. The nice thing is you can see what you have done um, directly on your wall. So every time when you... So maybe I can... I can change the shader for demonstration propose, which is here, and write a one behind it. Yeah. And here you see only the displacement. For getting the displacement um, on your uh, viewport, you need to active activate it here. Means you need to activate displacement map. It's also a good um, advice to go into um, the display settings, display options of your viewport, and change the displacement levels. May, um, I often work under under the value of one. Of course, this value changes how much your graphics card will divide the wall uh, or create um, additional geometry on the fly. When you turn this up to maybe three times, my four gigabyte um, um, NVIDIA card will shut down the entire uh, Houdini application. So it's important to be aware of, of your of your scene. So and in the end, it doesn't change mm, a lot. Only when you go a lot deeper. So yeah, back to one. And here you see that I also uh, implemented the the splash or the paint splash right into the displacement map. And yeah, you, you can check what you have done. So basically when I go and crank up this value, you see it will act immediately. So yeah, maybe two, yeah, two, that's good. So, and moment. Go back to this. So, back into the network. Oops. Oh my gosh. So, Jesus. So, in the end, um, what I've done is mixing up some different noise patterns in different forms. I use the composite node a lot. You also see it's a very fast system. Um, it's everything is described. And yeah, I use this uh, to create uh, the, the colors. By doing those things, I created another pattern, which is basically a copy from the first brick pattern, but I changed something in the, in the subcontext itself. So I created a split node to create different groups. Um, for getting um, a color map, with different colors applied so that I can use those stuff directly in COPS. So the result is basically this. Oh, yeah, it needs to render. 
So that's the blue, the blue channel, the chroma key of the blue channel, the red channel, and the chroma key for the green channel. I also um, use the deform node quite often. So the initial render is has straight bricks, and I use the noises for deforming the bricks itself and yeah I use some delay delayed the road nodes changed a bit here and there I created a new um, gradient for the different uh, masks so every set of brick is a bit different to the other and yeah basically that's the the background color of the color map where i feed it some noise into it and then i push the colors into it and here you see there are some differences in, in it um, I use the the alpha channel directly from this deformed um, map from the displacement map and yeah basically feed it all together which is rendering re really fast for a compositing system that's quite fast Yeah, and now we have the cement gravel the type of look right in the gaps. And at the end of each node, I created um, a, a temporary cache. Because when you don't use the cache, you have the advantage that you directly see in the viewport what you do, but this will slow down your entire compositing network a lot and you will consume a lot a lot of RAM. So I built this context with um with a cache just um I write down the, the color to a XR XR and yeah I built a a small a texture setup button system where you can recache everything, reload the textures, and activate the interactive or non interactive way. But personally, it's better to use this because uh, right now my system has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 24 gigabytes of swap space or cache space. Sometimes that's not enough, so this will save a lot of space. And when you want to clean your uh, texture cache, you can go to the um, Edit um, menu and um, use the Clear Composing Cache function or push Alt Shift R, and you will see it will drop to to the startup amount of of RAM which will need it for, from Houdini. So yeah, that's basically what I've done. And at the end I came to the idea, what if I would feed um, a simulation directly onto the wall, like a paint drop or some someone um, pushed a giant ball of, of paint onto the wall. So that's where it it gets a bit complicated in the first place. I created a pattern like all the others, but right in this pattern, I created a simulation. I changed a lot yesterday, so um, so check this so. And basically, I had the initial 
initial volume of um, scattered points. I created a, a bit of different uh, viscosity values. Um, I also feed it the wall from the compositing directly into the um, simulation context because this is um, really nice for getting um, those gaps between the pricks right into the simulation which brings a lot more realistic behavior of any fluid and which is basically done with the attribute from Bob where I feed it the displacement map directly into this and yeah displacement um, in normal direction I also switched I built up a switch for displacement and non-displacement simulations the rest is default and yeah this is something that I have described and at the end it's nothing more like a, a flip fluid simulation which is quite fast when the OpenCL card gets activated. Oh, uh, that's a problem with the with the yeah with the viewport. So and now you see that everything gets right into the into the wall. I try to make it look like um, typical behavior of paint with um, viscosity values and uh, change the friction values a bit, um, the activated bounce values. So and now we have this. This is what we want to have in the um, texture context for this I created some additions to the um, fluid network so in the first place I created a, a gradient um, from the bounding box so that I get a gradient from every point on the wall to the most far flown particles then I created a mask of that so everything which is black gets deleted after that oh no wrong direction no. so yeah it was late yesterday so So that's what. Why is this not working? Ah, here. So these are all particles we, which we would don't need. And then I created a flip fluid object one. Oh, that's a tiny arrow. Flip fluid object one. Hmm, crazy. The newest version of Houdini makes some problems sometimes. So basically we don't need that. I'll also type. Or maybe we can try this one. Or that one. Oh. Or that one. So So that's our surface right now. And then I created another uh, bounding box. And from this, I created a dev map. And the dev map is really important because we need a dev map or a representation of the dev for getting the correct um, displacement map for the paint on the wall. So. This is what you are here. 
that's what we need to change so that's close to black on the wall side and then this is the displacement so I stashed everything and feed it everything into the pattern render and so in the end you get you need to re-render everything ah, I activated the node on the down on the end side of the compositing network so he need to re-render and recache everything so this will take a bit longer now I also have only uh, i5 and not i7 so but basically and that's the resulting color map I also added an environment directly into the pattern scene for getting a better um, alpha um, edge representation because the uh, so-called pre-multiply um, areas um, apply the color from the background and I don't want the black outline so I created an environment with a light gray color then I pre-multiplied the entire thing so now you have a brighter outline which is no problem and yeah on that position I or yeah, on that position I tried some several other things so I used the alpha value of the rendering to get the colors or the color play or the places where the color is and I also copied it onto different direct, um, positions I mixed all up all together with the add no node and on the other hand I do the same with the displacement output so that's basically the displacement map I inverted everything um, pre-multiplied and used more or less the same positions and added them together I also um, cut out the inside parts of the different patterns so that the color values don't get higher or larger than it than they have to be or than they are actually in the reality so which looks like this then I plurts all a bit for getting better edges in the displacement map and then I feed it all directly into the displacement network and also in the color network so which looks like this this is the color representation and uh, I also use this method um, in the roughness I guess yeah that's the roughness and in the placement displacement of course the displacement was a bit tricky in the first place to understand but basically you need to take care that the imported values are not higher than or not lower than your wall behind means it's important to to look to add a lot or to add at least so much white value or gray value that the uh, paint is on the wall and it's not um, like in the alien movie um, eroding the uh, surface of the wall so that's why it looks a bit like that I also um, used some methods to get rid of the noise from the from the uh, uh, brick brick pattern gaps inside the paint so I masked them out on that place which is right here so that's the 
the the frame value that's um, the resulting that these are the resulting uh, values for the displacement map and this gets feeded directly into the displacement and here I can change the amount of displacement for the paint so realistically this is the best value so I also blurred out the entire area so that when the paint is on top of the wall the paint is is not accurate to the surface of the displacement so I blurred everything inside of the of the paint um, area with the alpha value so we can also do this with maybe 25 and yeah at the end I wrote everything out to different maps and when you do this you basically need only to do one thing you need to click on every everything every cache button which is quite fast normal map need to yeah okay so So everything is saved out, I reload everything, and now nothing in the viewport is happening. Um, what is this? What is this? I see the... I see something odd. Why do you see this? Hmm. Maybe yeah, that's a bug, I guess. Yeah, that's weird. Viewport. The lovely viewport. So, yeah, at the end I activate this. And now you have the textures. And then you also need to update the textures so that all changes are get updated in the entire texturing context of the shader. Yeah, and that's all. I will um, I will uh, upload the file um, on my Gumroad. I worked hard on this and I hope uh, a lot of a lot of artists get used to it. And hopefully um, side effects will improve the cop network in the future course there's a lot of potential and yeah I hope you like to download the file I will make the file available on Gumroad with um, a tiny amount of for a tiny amount of money for the next 14 days so I mean a 50% uh, discount on the file and yeah Hopefully you will like it and when you build other um, textures with this, the system, um, maybe wood textures or something like this, let me know. And if you have questions, let me know too. And yeah, hope you like it and have a nice day and have fun with testing.